Hi, Christina. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am doing very well. I appreciate you talking to me about this. It's uh, certainly pretty heavy to watch, and I would imagine uh, pretty heavy to explore as an actor, too. Totally. Yeah, it's not light watching. Um, <laughs> not at all. Not in the slightest. We're also we're just dealing with uh, there's a lot of, of heavy material, um, which we largely pulled from the book. So we didn't really have a choice in the matter. Well, when this project came your way, what most excited you about the opportunity to do it? And, and what were you most scared about? Um, when it first came around, the first thing that I noticed actually was just the fact that it was set in the Pacific Northwest and I'm from Seattle and telling stories that are like central to that part of the country was exciting for me. And then I read it and um, Molly's writing was so engaging and fresh and um, had such a unique point of view that it just immediately drew me in. Um, and also, you know, I've worked with Margaret a few times now. She's incredibly talented. And so that was exciting. And um, it was, it was, the challenge was exciting. It was definitely a departure from any, from any role that I've played before. Um, and so that was an exciting opportunity, but also the scariest thing about it, you know, was stepping outside of my comfort zone and um, playing kind of the villain. Yeah, I mean, really to himself more than anyone else. Totally. Yeah, Sean is his own worst enemy, uh, along with sort of everyone else's. But <laughs> uh, yeah, he's as a, that character has a lot of demons that he's wrestling with and is kind of negotiating with over the course of the show. Um, and, you know, he's ultimately is somewhat redeems himself at the end, but it's a rocky road to get there between love simon and a teacher and now this i mean you've definitely been playing some very different characters from each other <laughs> what have you learned about yourself as an actor from doing some of the very different recent projects that you've done um i mean i've learned that um i i, I like doing these different types of roles where it's not um, it's, it's not the same thing over and over. I mean, and, um, I think that, uh, yeah, just the older I get, the, the more, um, I have been able to try at least to take more agency kind of over my own choices and projects, um, and trying to like, um, be, yeah, there as as um, specific and and uh, intentional as possible about what I'm picking um, or have the opportunity to do. And uh, yeah, I've, I've learned that like um, you sometimes just the stuff that scares you is the stuff that is the thing that more often than not will um that you'll either be most proud of at the end of the day or that will kind of garner the most attention um and just not being not letting yourself get in your own way in terms of falling too much into a comfort zone or a, a complacency trying to make sure that you're always going a little bit further into the deep end you know this character is an alcoholic. He's in a toxic relationship. We see that so much of his behavior is rooted in his family, even though that's not an excuse for him hurting other people. How did you approach getting inside of the mindset of this character? Were there things that helped you in understanding those issues with addiction and abuse for him? Yeah, I, um, I mean, the first sort of reference point was the book, but Stephanie wrote that book about her life and very much relegated the char different character in the book, but the character, the, char the same character I was playing in the show to sort of the sidelines. You don't get to know much about him. Um, and beyond that, I felt like I knew some people in my life who had similar issues as Sean and 
um, sort of saw the way that they could lash out. There were, um, there was one family friend in particular at Seattle who I knew that was like, had a heart of gold and like would give you the shirt off his back, but then also just really struggled in certain areas of his life um, and could not get out from underneath that. Uh, and I think Sean um, is an example of somebody who allows himself to just kind of fall victim to his own circumstance. And he's trying, um, but like, like you mentioned, he has a lot of trauma in his past with his family. And, um, you know, that has gradually kind of gotten passed down, I think, to him. And so he copes in the only way that he knows how and the way that he was modeled, his you know, behavior was modeled, which is alcohol, drugs, um, in order to kind of ease some of that trauma and pain of his past. And yeah, it, it and he loses control of it uh, multiple times throughout the, the um, throughout the series. Um, and it was just such a well-written character too. Um, Molly kind of spelled it all out on the page. And so, you know, it made my job a lot easier. Yeah, that definitely helps. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about where things end up for him? As someone who lived with him for as long as you did, do you wish things could have been different for him? Do you hope that maybe somewhere down the road he gets himself together more? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I hope that Sean, you know, is able to get sober and sort of tackle his demons and be an active part of his daughter's life and, um, you know, hopefully be able to uh, forgive himself and, um, you know, ask for forgiveness for the people around him for his actions and move forward with his life. I think um, where you see him at the end is definitely a low point, but it's also, uh, I think he has kind of a moment of clarity and does the right thing in letting his daughter, you know, go on to hopefully have a better life than he did. So it's sort of this last act of like kindness that he ends it on. And hopefully he is able to, yeah, get his life together after that, but who knows. Did you have a favorite scene to shoot? Were, were these all challenging, difficult scenes or were there scenes that felt lighter that you actually had a little fun with doing? Um, I really enjoyed, um, there's a few different uh, moments throughout the show that I actually had a lot of fun shooting. There's the birthday party sequence um, when all of the, all, Alex hosts Maddie's birthday party at her new house. Yeah. Just the way it was shot was really fun. It allowed us a lot of freedom. It was just a lot of kind of roving camera stuff that there wasn't necessarily blocking. You kind of just went where it felt natural and they would follow you. That was really fun. A lot of the, um, I mean, a lot of the uh, uh, sets and like the trailer, for example, even though it was kind of a dark space, it was fun because it was a practical set. It was just a single wide and you could have free reign to go and open a drawer and find utensils. And like everything was sort of just set up and created this very whole world to play. In. And that's really just credit to the production designer, um, Renee and art department. Um, and uh, so those, those scenes were always really fun, like either in the trailer or um, in any kind of ensemble setting where it felt like very free, you just felt very free to do what you wanted. Um, uh, so I'd say those are probably, probably my favorite. Yeah, I mean, this definitely felt like something where everybody had to be all in and that, you know, even when there are things that were difficult to do, you just sort of had to be fully in doing them. Totally, yeah. Um, it was it was a group effort and everybody was yeah in it a hundred percent um and you it, it was infectious for sure you kind of felt that uh as we went along and it well, made for a fun environment it, it's fun to come to work to well thank you for talking to me about it it is definitely heavy to watch but also still hopeful so i, I appreciate you talking to me about it of course yeah thanks for the time christina